Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship. Uh, thank you for those of you who were brave enough to come out in this bitter cold this morning. And welcome to all of you who are joining us online this morning. I have just a few announcements before we begin. The first is an item from the mission committee. It is on the page seven of your bulletin. We are going to be doing a small glove collection. Not a collection of small gloves, but a small collection of gloves. Um, we know that in cold weather, even an inexpensive pair of gloves can make a big difference for people. Um, so you can see pricing and dates for collection there um, if you would like to help donate for either kids or adult gloves. I'm sorry, page six. So it looks like this, a little glove information. Um, the office will be closed tomorrow for Martin Luther King Day. Um, Sarah's husband, our secretary Sarah, her husband's grandfather died over the weekend and they are waiting to hear about family funeral arrangements. Um, so the office may um, be unexpectedly closed either this week or next week. If you do encounter the office closed, um, please call me directly or send me an email. It will be because she is out doing family items. Uh, for those of you who are on session, next Saturday, January 20th, we'll be meeting here for a half-day planning retreat. That's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, there are some items in your mailbox here, and you may also have an item in your mailbox at home. Um, a little bit of reading material and advance work for that meeting. And the reports are due into the church office this Tuesday. I know it takes a little bit longer sometimes to get financial reports. Um, so get those into us when you are able. Uh, we hope to have everything finalized so we can print at the end of this week and get it sent out to folks to read in advance of the meeting. Uh, we sure appreciate everyone who has uh, gotten their items turned in so far. New directories are available. If you would like an updated church directory, they are on the chair outside of the sanctuary. Um, if we run out of what's there, let me know and we will print some more. If you were not here last week or did not get a star word last week, we do have uh, more stars to distribute, so let me know, and we will get you a star for the year. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Let us turn our hearts and minds to the act of worship.
Good morning. Will you join with me, please, in the responsive call to worship? God spoke the creative word into the formless void. The cosmos cries glory. From the wilderness, God brought forth new life and liberation. The plants and animals that inhabit the wild places cry glory. A messenger in the wilderness brings good news. God's people cry glory. In baptism, we are united to God through Jesus Christ. With all of creation, we cry glory. Let us now join together in hymn 39, Great is Thy Faithfulness. sin received the baptism of repentance so that we who have sinned may be covered by his righteousness the spirit enables us to tell the truth of our brokenness already assured by the grace of Jesus Christ let us confess together creating God we cannot look at our lives our communities or the world around us without seeing the fractures and brokenness that reflects the reality of sin you created the earth and called it good, but it now groans, awaiting redemption and recreation under the weight of our greed, abuse, and carelessness. You created humanity in your image and called us very good, but we have ignored the image of God in each other. We have created, maintained, and benefited from unjust systems built on divisions based on race, gender, sexuality, 
ethnicity, and more. You poured out your love in Jesus Christ, who showed us how to live and how to love. But we continue to make our own path, follow our own desires, and neglect to love others as Christ loves us. Lord, have mercy. Recreate us in your image. Amen. The heavens part, the waters swirl, and the dove descends, reminding us that we too are God's beloved children. We are covered by God's grace and forgiven in Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Send your Holy Spirit upon us to show us your word and show us your ways. Amen. The scripture this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. This is about the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I was hoping to have children here today so they could pass these out for me, but I guess I'll have to do it myself. Here. Hold on to that for a minute. We'll talk about it later. Um, since we just sat down, let us remain seated now. We'll sing hymn number 482. I believe this one, is this a familiar hymn, Kim, or is it one that we haven't sang before? <coughs> Excuse me. It's familiar tune. We can do that. Let us sing together.
this is a service that comes up on the calendar every year, Baptism of the Lord Sunday. It's sort of a funny thing on the calendar for a couple of reasons. The first is it usually um, conflicts with Epiphany of the Lord. So we have to do a little bit of shuffling on our church calendar in order to get both Epiphany and Baptism of the Lord in. And I found that while some of our Christian services are very intuitive, Baptism of the Lord Sunday is not particularly one of those. It's not a service like Christmas or Easter or Palm Sunday, where it comes up on the calendar every year, and we know the purpose of it, and we go with a plan in our minds about how it's supposed to look and how it's supposed to feel, what we're supposed to gain from it. Uh, baptism of the Lord, no one has said ever, I know exactly what to expect. At least I don't think so. It's not that same sort of intuitive service. And it raises the question, of course, why have Christians over the years added this to our calendar? Why do we celebrate it? That's the word we use. Why do we celebrate it every year? Why is it always there? It, there are some other services that are like this that we recognize more or less based on our denominational preference. We have some like Ash Wednesday, a little bit more intuitive, Holy Week, Pentecost, and then some oddities like the Transfiguration of the Lord and Christ the King Sunday. So why do we pause on this Sunday that we call Baptism of the Lord? The, the most obvious answer is this. It is considered to be one of our two sacraments in the Protestant Church. If you went through confirmation when you were younger, uh, then you probably learned this lesson that we have two sacraments. One of them is baptism and the other is communion. Uh, if you grew up Catholic, which I know there are a couple of Catholics or former Catholics here, then you learned about more sacraments uh, than what the average Presbyterian would know. But we hold these two sacraments of baptism and communion to be of utmost importance in the Presbyterian Church and the Protestant denominations. In fact, there are a couple of the only services within the church that have to be performed by an ordained minister or with some sort of a special permission in order to do them. Even our certified ruling elders, which we consider to be the same as or just like ministers, um, have to have special permission in order to baptize or serve communion at particular churches. So, it's a sacrament. Second, I think that we pause on this baptism of the Lord Sunday, at least briefly, to consider what exactly baptism is. Trying to explain the importance of baptism to a confirmation class has been an ongoing challenge in my life. What does baptism mean? What does it do? I remember one curriculum in particular called baptism, get this, the outward sign of an invisible mark placed upon us by God. Y'all got that? The eighth graders didn't either. They came up with something like, Sort of like a tattoo? <laughs> Perhaps. We, if we were to parse that apart, we might come up with some sort of answer. But you know, for most of these students that I've worked with, and I believe probably for most of you, we are baptized by our parents, and then we grow into faith as someone who was already claimed and marked with the invisible mark before we even have a memory. Can I ask how many of you actually remember your baptism? I, I am one of the few. I was baptized when I was about between eight and nine. Um, my heathen parents finally decided it was time, I guess. My mom's listening this morning, so she just got that. Um, but most of us are baptized as children and as small children that don't remember what baptism 
feels like. And I think that's part of what this service of baptism of the Lord is supposed to remind us of. But how can we be reminded of something that we didn't really experience in the first place, at least not in a way that we have a memory of? It's a conundrum. And it raises the question, what does the modern Christian then do with baptism of the Lord Sunday? Why do we celebrate it? Why do they bother to put it onto our calendar at all? Here's the best I've come up with. Baptism at heart is a reminder that we are the beloved children of God. Not quite as wordy as the visible act of an invisible mark that's put there by God, but I think it might work. You all know my son Jesse, you've met him, he's five, and he likes to ask questions about faith. A lot of questions about heaven in particular, um, but some of his questions are ridiculous and some are quite profound. And the questions this week included these. Does God see everything? Yes. Is God everywhere? Yes. Does God love me even if I'm bad? Yes, God loves you even if you are bad. To which he said, I'm good and bad, so how about that? Yes, God sees everything and is everywhere. Yes, God loves you even when you are bad. And most people are a combination of good and bad, just like you, Jesse. And even if God is not pleased with something you've done or I've done, God loves us no matter what. God's love will not be revoked. That's the reminder and promise of baptism. We don't have to be baptized in order for God to love us. But there is something about the act of being baptized into a community that helps us to remember that we are a beloved child of God, even if it is an invisible mark. So that is baptism of the Lord's Sunday. It is a reminder that we are loved, even when we aren't perfect. I'm sure most of you are, but if you're not or having an off day, God loves you anyway. God loves you even when other people are mad at you. God loves you even if other people are disappointed in you. God loves you even if you're disappointed in yourself. More than a parent loves, more than a best friend or a spouse loves, more than any human capacity, God loves us. Each and every one of us, in every day, in every place, everywhere, we are beloved children of God. Now, we are claimed by baptism. That's the language we use is this claiming language. We are claimed in baptism into a community of faith. That is, a bunch of people who've been brought together by God. But, as much as that community loves us, God loves us more and longer. From our first breath until our last, we are beloved children of God. And I think that's why we have baptism of the Lord Sunday. So that no matter what, no matter when, and no matter where, we remember that there is someone, something that loves us. Unconditionally. Even when we're having the worst day. Even when we're having the best day. 
no matter what. It's a great lesson for a five-year-old, but I think it's a better lesson for adults because children still have faith and love. And as adults, we can sometimes become jaded to it because we know that when we make others mad and when we disappoint people and when things don't go right, sometimes loved ones leave. But God never will. That's baptism of the Lord Sunday. May God remind us each and every year that we are beloved. With that, we come into our offering. We are called by virtue of our baptism into a life of service. We are equipped through the gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit. Let us live into our baptismal calling, sharing from what we have received according to the measure of Christ's gift.
join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty Creator, maker of all things, the world could not express all of your glory, even if the grass and the trees could sing. You made a multitude of wonders that cannot be equal. No language can express them. No letters can contain them. It is no hardship to offer our praise to you. And it is our delight to praise the child that was born to Mary. Amen. Now we will sing hymn 525, Let Us Break Bread Together. Please be seated. I have an extensive prayer list for this morning. Um, I will read it and then ask what prayers you would like to share this day. Uh, the first on my prayer list is uh, prayers of thanksgiving and continued recovery for Millie Sivak, who was in the hospital earlier this week. Um, and had a heart procedure done. She thanks everyone for their prayers and continued prayers um, as she is at home recuperating. Continued prayers for Tim Anson, the son of Dave and Marcia Anson, as he resumes chemotherapy uh, treatment. Prayers for a, a good family friend of mine and my family's, a man named Woodrow, uh, who died on Friday for Woodrow and his, his spirit and his family. Uh, our secretary, Sarah's husband, Tyler, his grandfather died this weekend. We ask for prayers for uh, the Bishop family. Um, I did see Dixie come in briefly. Um, prayers of Thanksgiving that Rod is back home after a stay in Benefice this past week after being admitted for pneumonia. Continued prayers for Rod and Dixie. Continued prayers also for Doug Hickey and for Tammy. Doug was um, flown to a, an acute care long-term hospital in Colorado um, this past week where they hope that um, he can start doing long-term long care and rehab. Um, Tammy was able to join him and we pray for his um, continued health journey. Received a message yesterday from the Chigbro family. Uh, please keep Orville Chigbro in your prayers. He has been going through uh, cancer treatment and is currently very weakened. Uh, prayers for Orville and for the family. 
Prayers for Estelle uh, Bullchild and her grandchildren. Her grandchildren did move back home with her this past week. Um, prayers as they uh, work on and toward that transition in their home. Um, they are in need of a couple of items, so if you happen to have a few um, household items, especially children's beds and bedding, um, we are hoping to find some of those to get to her um, to help support her and her grandchildren. Uh, prayers, uh, continued prayers for uh, Jeanette Forsyth's brother, Mike. You may remember that we were praying for him when he was unexpectedly hospitalized right before Christmas. Um, his test did show um, uh, a large uh, tumor, brain tumor, and he has been moved into hospice care. Jeanette and Ben have been over visiting the last week and a half or so, and they've been waiting for the weather to clear in order to return to Montana. So prayers for Mike. Continued prayers for Chuck Carlson, the uh, temporary uh, or inter interim executive director for Glacier Presbytery. Um, he is working um, to place his wife Betty into an adult daycare situation as her um, advanced Alzheimer's sets in. And prayers for this morning for Anne Crawford. Anne is not with us this morning. She has been experiencing morning nosebleeds now for several months, um, and that has kept her out of worship many Sundays. So prayers for Anne as she uh, tries to manage that. That is a lengthy list. We would also add uh, prayers for all of those who are out in today's weather, um, both those who are without shelter and those who find themselves uh, out in this weather for all sorts of reasons. We know that it can bring a lot of complications, including furnaces that break down and pipes and vehicles and all sorts of things. What prayers would you add this day? Yeah, Beth. Yes, prayers for Joe, who's having cataract surgery tomorrow. We pray that goes smoothly for you. We are not without many prayers on our hearts and minds. We take those as we join together at the communion table. Flame us with your spirit, 
that we may be united in ministry in every place. Send us in your marvelous light into the world, ready to serve others and to work for peace. We pray in the name of the triune God. Amen. Jesus, on the night of his arrest, sat at a table with his disciples, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. And said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, each time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show forth Christ's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. People from north and south and east and west, each week, gather together to share this feast which Christ with his own body has prepared. This is an open table. All who seek are welcome. Take and eat. Would you please join me in our responsive prayer of intercession? God of new beginnings, as we turn the calendar page to a fresh new year, 
We long to erase and leave behind the brokenness of the year behind us. We forget that our time is not your time. We are grateful that you are just as present with us today as you were last week, and that you will be present with us in the coming weeks when we are ready for yet another fresh start. We pray for all that we wish to erase, wars, genocide, and atrocities that are beyond what most of us can imagine. Places on the brink of humanitarian crisis and those already past it, senseless gun violence, climate change and its many devastating facets, inequalities of wealth and access, the erosion of democracy, cultural, social, political and familial divides, economic despair, loneliness, hopelessness, hunger for food, thirst for clean water, addiction, despair, and more. We pray for the burdens that we continue to carry forward, scary diagnoses, unknown and uncertain futures, loss of loved ones, watching loved ones lose more of themselves. Our time is not your time, and yet in this new year, we believe that you are doing a new thing Hear our prayers for new beginnings, new hope, and healing as we offer you the prayers of our hearts. We follow Jesus, reminded that the waters of baptism unite us to you and to each other. We enter wildernesses not of our own choosing, reminded that they are places of new beginnings. We entrust the prayers voiced the ones that remain held in confidence, and those known only to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Keep us, we pray, in 
burn in peace. Help us to walk together. Pray together. Sing together. And live together until that day when all God's children, black, white, red, brown, and yellow, will rejoice in one common man of humanity. In the reign of our Lord. Would you please now join me in our closing hymn, Please Rise in Body or in Spirit as You Are Able, hymn number 486. as you go away from this place today, remember that you are a beloved child of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.